Okay, guys, so continuing on on 3.5, we already did those two basic examples. Um, I want to look at a few other types. Uh, we also introduced two basic reciprocal functions. So this is one of those things where you want to make sure you read beginning of the section, especially for this 3.5, okay? And the reciprocal function is basically just f of x equals 1 over x. And it looks like this. You can try plugging it into your calculator or you can plug in points. And the idea is that x can never be equal to zero. And obviously that's because we would have division by zero just like we did in our other examples. So our vertical asymptote is at x equals zero. There's no surprise there. We also see that the degree on bottom is greater than the degree on top, which as we know, like we did in our previous examples, that means that we have a horizontal asymptote of y equal to zero. Remember, the horizontal asymptote tells us what we're getting closer to as we go really far to the right or really far to the left, okay? The other one, it's kind of like the reciprocal function, is f of x equals one over x squared, okay? Now the x squared term, essentially what that did is it flipped this one up here, okay? Essentially you can't get a negative value on this, okay? So if you look at this, um, we have the point negative one, 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 so we still can't have x equal to zero. Notice we have an even multiplicity that corresponds to this vertical asymptote. And remember when we have that, that actually means if it goes up one way, it comes out the same side, okay? And I guess one thing I should probably include with these is a domain and range. So the domain on the first one is negative infinity to zero, not including zero to infinity. And the range is actually the same thing, negative infinity to zero, union zero to infinity. Down here, it's a little different. So our domain is the same, negative infinity to zero, union zero to infinity. And our range is only zero to infinity, but of course not including zero. Okay. So now that we have these, hopefully we understand them quite well, let's suppose I want to graph something like this. Graph each, each function and give the domain and range. So f of x equals 1 over x minus 2. Okay. So one thing I could do is I could put this over 1 and try to get them all into a single fraction and do it like we did the other ones. Or if I'm clever, I can use transformations. Okay. So I know that this minus 2 tells me that I have to shift down by two. Remember, I'm referring to our transformations right now, right? So if I do that, remember, I normally have negative one comma negative one and one comma one on the graph, right? I'm talking about these two points here. Well, if I shift down by two, those points are gonna go to negative one, negative three, and one comma negative one. So I guess I'll put those in negative one, negative three, and one negative one. Also, my horizontal asymptote had to shift down by two. It used to be here at y equals to zero. Now, it's right here at y equal to negative two, okay? Question is what happened to the vertical asymptote? Well, that didn't change because we just shifted down. So I still have a vertical asymptote of x equal to zero, okay? And this uh, graph is still gonna have the same general shape. There were no like crazy reflections or anything like that. So I know this is gonna look just like this. Up here. Get this type of deal, okay? So not too bad. Let's try one that has two of these. So notice this one, I have a different base function would be the one over x squared. So I know that I'm gonna to have to do two things. I'm going to have to shift right by one. That's from this part right here. And then I know I'm gonna to have to shift up by two. That's from this part right here. Okay. So normally on one over x squared, I have these two points. I have negative one, one, and I have one, one, and then those same horizontal and vertical asymptotes. 
So normally I have negative one, one, and one, one. So I wanna know after I do these two shifts, where are these gonna be? Well, if I shift right by one, I'm going to move the X over by, uh, to the right by one. So this will be zero for the X value, negative one to zero, that's right by one. And I went up by two, so this is now a three, one to three. The one, one, I shift to the right one, that's two. I go up by two, that's three. So let's see, I have zero, three, zero, three, and I have two, three. Two, three, okay. Now, if I shifted right by one, what happened to my old vertical asymptote I had here? That shifts right by two, or sorry, that shifts right by one as well. So now I have this. And this is good because it's still separating those two values. So I have down here, x equal to one is the equation of the vertical asymptote. What happened if I shifted up to to the old horizontal asymptote? That shifted up to. So right here, I have y equal to two is the equation of my horizontal asymptote. There are no reflections or anything crazy like that. So this is pretty okay. It's gonna go like so. So that's how you can handle some of these reciprocal functions and sort of how to deal with those, okay?